You know, I really think that people like Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor are actually some of the humblest people in the world. I've done martial arts, uh, including boxing, for almost 16 years now, and I've been doing Muay Thai and、uh, Jiu Jitsu for the past year. And there's one thing I can say for certain it's that people who aren't humble don't last in the sport. Like, you see these people, boxers, MMA fighters, they're just talking trash, make business and sell the fight, right? But once you have actually gotten in the ring or gone through a fight or training or something, you realize really quickly how no matter who you are, you start somewhere. And when you're at that stage, there's like a 16 year old who can beat you up, there's an old man who can beat you up, you'll lose fights to girls. All these sorts of things are gonna happen. So, of course, these big stars and everyone, right? They have to have self confidence. But what I'm saying here is that no one can. Get to and elevate to that level if they're truly arrogant. Like, we all know you learn from mistakes, and if you don't recognize those mistakes, you'll never get better. And recognizing those mistakes requires you to be humble. I can just think back to when I was training、uh, in boxing, and I could immediately tell the people who I knew weren't gonna last, right? We all know kids or people like this growing up, they had to get the last word in. If they were in a partner drill, Going one, two, one, two on the pads. You know, if someone just a punch a little bit harder, you know, they would return a little bit harder and escalate. And then that's when you find yourself in dangerous situations. Right away, you know that people like that, they aren't going to be able to learn from their mistakes. And honestly,、uh, fighting isn't, isn't a sport that you just play. And honestly, there's very few things that are as mentally humbling. Uh, with that feeling of actual powerlessness, then getting physically dominated in a fight. And to be able to go through that repeatedly and still be willing to stand back up, as I'm sure all these professional fighters have time and time again, takes an incredible amount of humbleness. If you've ever watched any of these boxing fights, you know, these are supposedly some like the baddest men on the planet going at it. And almost without fail, if there's Uh, ref stoppage in the middle. You can see how <laughs> the ref like runs runs at the person getting beat up and has to like, you know, pushes the, pushes the other fighter away and practically cradles、uh, the defeated fighter like a little kid. A minute ago, this was someone who could beat up like 99.9% of the planet, and suddenly in that moment, you see like the full weakness and vulnerability. It's like a little kid who needs to be like coddled by his mom. and That's the you know, mental challenges you go through with this sort of sport and this sort of training. So, I don't know about you, but I certainly don't want to be in those types of situations. But the only way that you're going to get that drive and motivation to overcome that feeling and sense of powerlessness is to experience being beat down first and being able to have that humility to stand back up. So, this is why I think that every man should know how to fight in order to not only protect yourself, but the people who matter to you around you. But then, why is humility so important? Humility is really what allows for you to know the limits of your strength. You know, it's the people that don't know how to fight who are the ones who are most prone to lashing out. And、uh, making a fool of themselves. There are, they always have these hero complexes in their head that they think that when a fight just breaks out, they're all of a sudden gonna see red and no one's gonna be able to stop them. But really, if you don't want to fight, nothing could be further from the truth. You're gonna get destroyed by anyone who just knows how to get into a stance. It's actually the people who know how to fight who are less likely to get into these confrontations that are honestly. Really stupid, right? You could accidentally hurt someone and your life could be ruined off that one mistake of yours or someone else's. And so, one of the benefits that you've probably heard about learning how to fight is this feeling of confidence that you get, that you're secure in yourself and you know how to handle yourself and you don't feel physically threatened. And that's all true, of course, but it comes from this、um, knowledge of humility and knowing that you don't have anything that you need to prove and you're just secure in yourself. The other thing about learning how to fight is that I really feel like even if you don't do it for the long term, everyone should get the experience of what it's like to spar. Sparring is basically as close as you can get to a life or death situation, and more than anything else, teaches you what it's like that you are under pressure 
you know, in the moment, obviously we're logically aware that the exercise and everything around us are fake. We're not in real danger, but it's been shown again and again in psychology experiments that even when we're aware that something isn't real, it could still feel very real to us. So I guarantee you the first time that you're in a sparring session in the ring, you're really going to feel like the person across from you wants to hurt you and that your life is in danger. And in that moment, is when you realize what you really are like underneath in high intense pressure situations. And in, in those situations, right, it's perfectly fine to be scared, to not know what to do. Like even if you've been training for two, three years up in that point, I guarantee you that's not gonna be your first reaction. Like keeping your hands up, keeping disciplined, all that just goes out the window. Like there's two things you have to realize here. First is just, self-discovery of trying to realize what you are in flight or fight situations and then secondly once you know what you're like now how can you control it how can you maintain your composure discipline all that and overcome the pressures and fears of the situation a lesson like that really teaches us what we're made of inside and aside from something like sparring or life fighting it's really hard to learn that kind of lesson from anything else. Finally, what I think fighting really teaches us all also is just having a better capacity for empathy for one another. At the end of a training session or a fight, you know exactly what the person across from you went through and you know exactly what kind of effort and pain it took to get to that point. No matter the fight sport, you just always see at the end of boxing matches or UFC contests or kickboxing contests. The two people who talked a lot of trash about each other and just spent, you know, the last 30 minutes trying to nearly kill the other person always come in for like a hug or a show of respect because there's really nothing that pushes you to the edge uh, and literally makes you come within an inch of death like fighting does. And a shared experience and bond like that uh, forges something that can't be replicated in a lot of other environments and really gives you that perspective and empathy into someone else and makes you appreciate that effort. You know, these two lessons of having humility, having empathy, I feel like very few people, if ever, truly learn this in their life, even deep into adulthood. It really comes down sometimes that people have to learn things the hardest way possible when they experience something negative and actually brings pain to their life. But hopefully we can strive to learn these lessons in slightly smarter ways. I really think that learning these life lessons through martial arts uh, is probably one of the most effective and rewarding ways to do so. And if you want to continue to learn how to better yourself, be sure to watch my other videos.